Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the Phoenix Color colored pencil set that I unboxed about a week and a half ago. This is a beautiful set of colored pencils. The pencils come in this uh, kind of brick. It's almost like um, you've got five volumes of color and they come in this kind of um, easy to wrap carrying case. And I say easy to wrap because I think that this is going to be more of a of a set of pencils that you would buy as a gift for somebody, or um, maybe you might buy for yourself or ask for for a present, and it may not be the type of product you use that much. However, I have to say that I did take one for the team and sharpen these guys up and play with them, and, um, and they performed quite nicely. So let's take another look here. And of course, if you wanna see these in their brand Brand new glory you can watch the unboxing but I'm just gonna slide all of these out of their sleeve you can see they're in this just kind of like um how like a DVD set would come if you bought a um, you know like a, a gift set there they are in these color volumes here and what I like to do actually is I will take the um, I'll take the box, I'll open it up. You can see it's got that beautiful die cut layered design on the front, it's just so pretty. Um, a lot of time and detail in this. That's why I'm thinking it'd be a really great gift set. I actually went through and I swatched each color as well, um, each color family, so you'll be able to see how they look on white and black and we'll get to that in a second. But I, what I like to do is actually lay them out and they're, it's gonna go off camera a little bit because I don't have that much space um, that I can zoom out on. But instead of, ta I, the first time I used them, I actually took these trays out, but then I realized if I nestle them into one another like that, I can have them on my table and they don't take up too much, uh, too much space that way. So that's kind of how I'd recommend uh, proceeding with these. And I know you're not gonna have this whole thing on camera, but you don't really need to because I'll, um, I can show you them individually. So. You can lay them out. Well, let's see how much I can zoom out. I can't really zoom out that whole way, almost. I can get everything but the, um, put that last part in there. Um, so let's take a look at the color range. Now these four sets here kind of go in color family and there is, um, there's writing on the box, and I think it's northeast, west, south. Um, a few of my viewers were Chinese and they could translate for me. Um, and I think there are different like, um, uh, animal symbols that correspond to each of those directional symbols and that's how this set is arranged. Um, I love stuff with a foreign writing on it. I think it's so interesting to see this artwork from different cultures and the pencils are actually pretty decent. So let's start with one set that isn't really, um, it doesn't really follow the the rest of the sets. I call this kind of the um, the catch-up set because it seems like they needed to catch up on all those other colors so that's where they uh, that's how they ended up with this one because you've got some grays, you've got some, a couple browns but there's also browns in the yellow orange set. You've got you know just some really real really pale tones, a couple peaches and a couple purples. It's kind of a mishmash in this one and I'll show you what those look like swatched out. Swatched out really well in white and the paper I'm using here is just some uh, Hannah Mule sketch paper that I really actually really like for color pencil. Um, and here's how it's on the black. It's a very muted earthy toned palette. Um, I feel like it's just kind of like the stuff they couldn't fit in the other boxes so you'll probably want to use these with other colors and I'll show you how I did that with some of the blending examples that I'll have in a minute. So there's those colors. I'm wondering Maybe I'll just set that box aside, then I'll bring all the swatches out together at the end. So now we have the red set, and we've got these colors swatched out on black and white. So the reds I found to be quite transparent, except for the pinks, very vibrant on the white paper. What I did was I swatched them, the big blocks of swatching are me swatching them right out of the box, then I sharpened them and I just did a couple strokes um, next to them with a sharp point. I do find that they feel a lot softer after you sharpen them. Sometimes what happens, I think, with pencils in storage, and if you have some old pencils and you don't think they're working very well, sharpen them. Because what I think happens is just like on your finished color pencil drawings, when you're, um, you know, they get that kind of haze at the top with that, that wax bloom where the wax kind of rises up over the pigment. I think that can happen with the pencils too, and then you're coloring and you're just getting that waxy outside and it, it feels streaky and not very pigmented. Um, I think that's what happens when pencils sit. So give them a sharpen and you're good to go. Even your older pencils, if they don't seem to perform very well, give them a sharpen. Um, that can really help. And uh, yeah, they did feel softer after I sharpened them, but I didn't think they were, it was that, that big of a deal. But anyway, there's the look of those two swatches on black and on white. 
The next we have the yellow brown orange box. And here on the black, we the yellows um, do have a bit of opacity. I'll turn it that way so you can see apples to apples of color. Um, but they're, I mean, they still, they're not very impressive on white. These have the feeling um, of lay down very similar to polychromos or as for, for as budget pencils, they lay down very similar to like the uh, deli pencils. Um, they have that kind of firmer oil-based lead. They've got a kind of sheen to them when you color and burnish with them rather than a waxy haze. Uh, it depends if you like that sort of um, that sort of firmness, they could be for you. I didn't th find them to be very uh, strenu strenuous to use, but it might be something to consider. They're not going to be soft like a Prismacolor or a Color Soft if that's what you want. Like if you have some strength issues. Um, you know, I didn't find them to be troublesome, but you might depending on what you're doing with them, I guess. I didn't. They just felt about the same firmness as a Polychromos to me. And the next set we're going to look at is the greens. There's lots of greens here. Really pretty uh, sage green. We've got some nice opaque teals in there that are that are really nice. There you can see com uh, comparison, black and white. They they stand out enough that you could use them on a toned paper. I don't think I'd recommend using them on a black paper just because they it you know they're not super opaque. They're not as opaque as say a color soft or a Prismacolor or a Holbein, but they are kind of similar in firmness to a Holbein. Maybe a little bit harder than a Holbein. I'm going to put my swatches back in these boxes, but I'm going to keep the swatches out together just for a, for a, um, for the review. And there we've got the blues. Actually, there's quite a few more opaque blues. I was really impressed with how well the blues looked on black. And I think you could definitely do um, an illustration on black using the blues and have them really pop. It would be cool if you were doing like, you know, water splashes in a puddle, or maybe you stamped something and you wanted to... Um, color it on black paper, like maybe you stamped it in silver embossed it, and then you wanted to to color with the blue on black cardstock, I think that would look really nice. They sharpen to a nice point. I didn't have any breakage issues, although um, I do have a couple shorter ones because I don't know if my pencil, my pencil sharpener didn't need to be charged during this, um, after I was done sharpening these. So I, I did have a couple pencils that it kind of like took in and seemed to sharpen much more, but I'll just sharpen this real quick so you can see. My sharpener's all charged here, so I'm just gonna bring it over. I like that sharpener, but it only takes my smaller pencils. Now these have a, they, they, um, the seller says a 3.3 millimeter core, um, and it's like a 7.5 millimeter barrel, I do believe. It does fit um, my standard pencil sharpener. Some of the pencils actually felt a little tight, but uh, not too bad. I think the real selling point of this is the beautiful foil stamp designs on the barrels of them. They're very pretty and I can see how these might be painful to sharpen, especially when if your pencil sharpener pulls one in and kind of chews it a little bit because then it's like, oh, it's shorter than all the others. But I mean, the, the foil design designs are just luxurious and gorgeous and I don't mind them a bit because I don't have to read them. There's no English on here except for the word Phoenix color. Uh, so I could just appreciate their shimmery, glittery beauty and not have to stress about reading them. But they each have a unique design. I think there might be re repetitions between the sets on the foiling design, but I don't see any repetitions in this. Well, maybe those two look very similar. No, those might be the same design. Um, and then they have some writing on them too, which I can't read because I, uh, I don't read Chinese. I found the lids to be overall very well centered and you can kind of test when you go like that through the sets to see if like you see different reveals of the lead. Overall, I found them very, uh, very similar. Only a couple times did I have an issue with breakage in the pencil sharpener. Um, and that was on one, it was actually the first pencil that I, um, that I sharpened and I was like, oh no, because like it was this one right here. It was like this brown red and like it like my pencil sharpener chewed it and it was the first one I sharpened and I was so bummed and I was like, well, not precious anymore. I might as well use these puppies. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're they're very they're very beautiful and I think they'd make a lovely gift for somebody who is a stationary fan, a planner person, a card maker, um, an artist. Although I think that because you're going to use some colors up more than others and there's no open stock available that I could find. Um, it's probably not going to be the best for like a heavy use application, more of a, these are nice, they work really well, but they're more for display and for having as part of your collection. They also have these in a set of 50. So this is a set of 100. There's also a set of 50. I'll just do that so you can see the rotation of the leads and the centering of the leads. These almost look a little bit bigger than a 3.3 millimeter to be honest, but that's what, um, that's what the uh, literature said. Um, and then this last one, I'll just do a quick little spiral around. 
very well centered. I'm very impressed with the build quality of these. The ends are capped, um, which that doesn't bother me if they are or they aren't, to be honest. But uh, some people like the look of that. And uh, yeah, I was I was pretty impressed. So let's look at the, um, I mean, the packaging is so pretty. The, by the way, the 50 set is, I'm just, I've got them both open on my computer right now. Um, the 50 set is the same artwork, but it's just 10 pencils per box instead of 20. And the 50 set is $46.40. And the, I gotta look at the 100 set. The 100 set is $76.86 today. Um, on AliExpress from Anstel Stationery, which is the company that sent these to me. And I have to say, I reviewed their set of Brute Funer 520 pencils um, a couple months ago. And although the pencils were decent, and I said that, I didn't recommend buying them because it was so many. And if you're going to spend like 140 bucks, you might as well get an artist quality set of like 72 or something. And I thought, well, I'm never going to hear from them again. And they thanked me for the review. They appreciated my candor and honesty. And they asked me if I would like to look at these. So um, I was happy that they <laughs> were not the kind of company that, um, that didn't wish to improve, that didn't wish for honest feedback, and I thought that was really cool. So let's take a look at some artwork, let's take a look at some blending swatches and see what we can see. Oh, I did want to mention that the um, that this comes with a, a kind of like a pamphlet here with the color swatches on them. And I did use my phone to translate just to see, I used Google Translate. And basically what the um, characters here say is um, it tells you what the color is and what the printing design is on the barrel. So if you're looking for that color, it'll say like, you know, it has a firework pattern or it has waves on it or it has whatever in case you're trying to figure out, um, you know, what color you're using, you're trying to pick the particular one. I'm not sure what, oh, you know what? Those little stars there, those little uh, things indicate, I think if they're, in the um, if they're in the 50 set as well I think so I guess that could be handy if you bought this and used up a bunch of the colors you might want to check to see if they're available in the 50 set and you could buy the 50 set to replace the ones that you've um, you've used up maybe I looked uh, I did Google Phoenix color to see if I could find some information and uh, it just kept bringing up American companies that happen to have that name as well but they were like art suppliers not selling these or they were like um, printing services and things like that so I didn't find out much about the company that makes these but um, I can say just dealing with Anstel stationery shop on AliExpress they seem to be very reputable ship shipping quickly and um, uh, of course I'm um, dealing with them is in the capacity of being a YouTuber who they're sending things to review. And they did send these to me for free. I didn't have to pay for these. Um, I actually have never ordered from AliExpress. I want to be completely um, truthful about that. So I don't know what that, um, what it's like to order from AliExpress. I get a little nervous about ordering um, other from like the, the main places I, I order from. Generally, I order from Blick, Jerry's Artorama, Cheap Joe's, Mary Artist, or Amazon. Uh, that's about it. Um, or any, well, if I order from a small shop, it's usually one that takes PayPal just because I like that security of, um, having my, my credit card information protected. But, um, I, I mean, I assume, I assume it's a similar experience as ordering on Amazon, but, um, that's all I can say. I've never ordered from AliExpress myself. They had these, they asked me if I wanted to review them and I had them in my hands like a week later. So, um, I don't know if that's typical shipping or if they did like a special shipping to me to get it quicker. I don't know, but, um, it came very well protected. It can't have this much bubble wrap on it. I actually rolled it up so I could save it and reuse it. That's how much bubble wrap. So definitely very well shipped. Um, when I had that first pencil break on me, I was a little concerned that maybe they took, it took a rough ride over here, but it, there was just two where the lead broke and I can't say that it wasn't for sure my pencil sharpener. So, uh, so there's that. So this was a little artwork I did today just to, um, just to practice kind of blending the pencils and layering them up. I had no problems at all working with these. This was just a quick little sketch. I also did it for Inktober because I wanted to kill two birds with one stone because well, you know what? It's getting towards the end of the month of Inktober and probably when this goes up, it'll be, it'll be November. Um, and I just, you know, I, I was thinking all those pop-it beads that the, um, the prompt was connect. And I just remember popping those beads in and out when I was a kid until you eventually ruined the bead and then you couldn't do it anymore. But I always thought those were a ball, uh, were a blast. So I, that's why I sketched, but very easy layering, very easy blending. I did the shadow with a gr one of the grays and then I used a very pale, like a 10% cool gray Blick Studio marker to blend that out. 
worked really well, blended out great with, um, with like an alcohol marker. They respond to odorless mineral spirits. They respond to, actually they will respond to water a bit too, because they do uh, something about those um, Chinese made oil based pencils. Even Polychromos does it for uh, a bit. Will somewhat dissolve with water. I think wax is more waterproofing and when the pencil has more oil than wax in it, it doesn't have quite as much waterproofing ability so or water resisting abil ability so um i just wanted to mention that and then i did this artwork yesterday and this is on tone tanned paper i used a base of alcohol marker and then i layered up the colored pencil worked very well um and i was able to blend out build up my color because these were obviously very dark on a toned paper so all this brightness was from the pencil and um although i wouldn't consider it a very opaque opaque pencil because if we look at our swatches here on black they're not it's not super opaque um, but it was opaque enough to, whoops, to, uh, hold its own on the, on the tone tan paper. So, um, you know, just for your reference, I d did have somebody specifically ask me to swatch these on black, so I thought I would, and then keep them right in the boxes because then I just have a quick reference when I go to use them again. Um, but yeah, I was really happy with how these performed on the super smooth paper. I think having a paper with a little bit more tooth to it like this, Hanna Mule, I can show you the package right here, what the pad looks like. I love this paper. It's called, um, it's actually called Sketch Pastel. I guess that's German for sketch. Um, and this is, I think this is great for colored pencil. I think you get 25 sheets, in a, 30 sheets in a pad. Um, I can't remember how much this was, but, um, but it's a wonderful, it, it's a wonderful paper. If you have access to this, I would recommend it. I would, it's not super thick. I don't think it would be that expensive of a paper. Um, but it does, it's, I think because it's, it's textured slightly, it's more, if you run your fingers over, it feels fairly smooth, but it does have a little bit of a grit to it. Um, and, but it's not like the big um, hills and valleys of watercolor paper. I didn't find that those pencils to work as well in watercolor paper as they work on this type of paper. So some sort of drawing paper that's got a little bit of a grit to it, not super bumpy, but just a little bit of a grit. Um, now where is, right here. So yeah, uh, when I did the unboxing, I just quickly swatched some of those colors. Then I put some water on them just to see if they moved uh, when I was doing my other tests. And yes, they did. So I just wanted to put that out there because I, I know some people are very concerned with that. Now, I, they, don't, I, they don't seem to activate enough to be bothered by like a white pen. I've got a Posca pen right here. Let's give it a, let's do some little, let's do some little dots on there. We'll see if the color leaches through. I don't think it will. Um, but we'll give it a test. Sometimes different colors also react differently. Like I'll go over real brush pens sometimes with these and sometimes the color leaks, leaches right up through and sometimes it doesn't. Um, so we'll just let that dry. It looks like the pink might leach up a little bit, but that's pretty typical of pinks and reds. So I did a layering test and this is this is a Canson Vision, I think. I think it's Canson Vision watercolor paper. I just had some swatches already. Um, already stamped out, so I thought I would use that. So here on our layering test, I was able to get eight layers and I did have to start burnishing it at around seven, um, but it worked pretty well. And of course my, my first, my layers were pretty light. So, I mean, if you layered more, you get, if you put down more per layer, you get fewer layers, but um, I can show you the, the um, whatchamacallit, this stuff right here, I can show you that, the, odorless mineral spirits. This is Gamzol, and I just keep a little jar with some cotton balls and I put my Gamzol in there so I can kind of wipe my brush, clean it if I need to, but it keeps me from getting too much. So we'll just dissolve. You can see it dissolves it very easily. I can pull the color out just so you can see it is dissolving. Now let's do it with water. I'll show you the difference. I've got to get a different brush though. Let's take this one right here. Got some water right here. I'm just going to dip my brush in my water. And let's dissolve this one here just to see the difference. See, about the same. Actually, is the water kind of lifting off the, I think the water is lifting that up more. Now that is a lot of pigment, but yeah, your water is going to, your, your water is going to blend it just as well as the odorless mineral spirit. So if that's one thing you don't have to worry about, you could definitely use water. The only reason I would suggest if you might not want to use water is if you're on a thin paper like that, like this paper I just showed you, um, you might not want to use water just because it might wrinkle the paper, but, uh, uh, uh like a Prismacolor or Copic clear blender, any of those alcohol based blending markers would blend it out for you. Like I did with the gray there. I just used a, an alcohol marker, really light gray alcohol marker. So you have three different options for blending this and it's all going to work good. So, um, 
So do whatever you like. Now, I did have some questions about blending. How will these blend? I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I think the blends are really nice here. Um, and I, some of these colors, some of these blends are just two colors. Most of them are three or more. Um, and this is just that watercolor paper, which I think it's a sizing on the watercolor paper that makes it sometimes not work so great with pencils because the, um, uh, it worked, it worked, uh, I felt like it was way easier to lay down the pigment on this paper than it was on the watercolor paper or on the mixed media paper because that was so smooth. This is just perfection. Stonehenge also, I really like that one. Some people don't. You do you. I like it a lot. Um, I thought about using this on a sanded paper, but I thought that wasn't quite, people probably aren't going to be using sanded paper on, um, uh, with these pencils, so um, if it works good on regular paper, it'll work great on sanded paper. So here's kind of a coral blend. I think I took one of the corals from that um, that kind of ketchup box, <laughs> and then one some from the uh, pinks. I got some browns there. That was from the red, or was that? No, this was from the yellow orange. This was from the yellow orange box. This one's hard to see because it's hard to get value contrast in yellow. But I went from like kind of a warm yellow to a lemon. Some blue, some teal. I was really happy with these, and these have no um, solvent. This is just the pencil. I started by layering, and then at the last uh, layer, I burnished, and it worked really well. I'm really pleased with how, how these colors blended out. I'm pleased with how I could layer with them. They are not just a pretty face. We've got style and substance here, friends, and um, I recommend them. I recommend them. I think that practically, though, they're going to be best for a gift because <sighs> are you going to be are you going to be able to use them? They're so they're so pretty. The packaging is so beautiful. If you buy these, will they be precious? They will be precious. I probably wouldn't have been able to. If somebody gave these to me as a gift, I probably wouldn't be able to use them. I had to use them because I agreed to use them for a review. But if I was given these, they'd probably sit on the shelf because they're too pretty. So, but they can be used and they are quite nice. Now, another thing I want to test is erasing. So I got my electric eraser. Actually, let's zoom in again. Uh, let's see how these erase. Now, actually, I did erase something with the, with the eraser and it worked fine just using regular application. So let's try erasing maybe down to layer four here. Oh, it's kind of smearing there. I did not have a smearing problem. Hold on. You know what I do? I use my eraser and I erase it on my, like, my jeans and sometimes it'll take the extra crud out of there. Not too bad. For a pretty strong color like that. And it erases a bit, actually, but I had no problem erasing on the white paper here with them, so um, I can't even see where I made my, where I had that mark I had to erase. But that was just with a really light application, kind of like a mistake. How a mistake would be really wouldn't be that dark, wouldn't be as dark as that. So I had no problems with my electric pencil eraser, which is from Jerry's Autorama, by the way. It's the Quick Fix, and it comes with like yeah, I got the eraser in like, I don't know, a box of 50 refills or something. I think it was like $5. It was crazy. But um, but that worked fine. Oh, we can look back at our white pen here and see what has leached up and what hasn't. By the way, if you do have a problem with stuff leaching through your pigments, try the Dr. Peach Martin's Bleed Proof White. It's less likely to leach your colors underneath and you're going to get um, a much purer white. But with the uh, Posca pens, actually I refill this with, um, uh, with Dr. Peach Martin's Liquid Acrylic Ink. Um, but even the regular Posca will do a little leaching. So there's a little leaching in the magenta, but that was the only one that leached up any color. I pr it probably would leach up color on this just because I have so much. Um, well, maybe not. We can wait, wait a second and see. But um, what I do in that event is I would just go over and I would put another dot on top. And once that first layer of Posca pen seals it down, you can't go over again. But I just would warn that, warn you, because I do know some people like to you know, spray their work with a fixative and that maybe that would affect it. I would even think with a fixative, it because that's kind of like, um, usually has an alcohol in it. So, I mean, I think that would dissolve, that might dissolve regular colored pencils too. I don't use fixative on colored pencils for that reason, but, um, you know, I'm not going to tell you what, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. Yeah, this is leaching the red out of that purple. Look at that. So this must be a mix of like purple and blue and we're getting some of the, the red out of that that's pulling up through the layers. That's interesting. But anyway, there you have it the beautiful Phoenix Color colored pencil set of 100 colors. I will link to it down below. Anstel Stationery, A-N-D-S-T-A-L, is the company that sent me these. So if you want to find them on AliExpress, maybe you're not at your computer, you can just remember that and type it into AliExpress and find it. I do not earn anything on the sale of these. So um, I was not paid for this. They sent me the pencils for free. I do not earn anything if you buy this. Um, just, just to be completely honest with you and put that all, look how pink that is turning. Wow. 
Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Wow, that just is pulling that pink, that red pigment. It's funny though, I usually find that the red pigments are the ones that dissolve more. If there's going to be a color that dissolves in the, um, in the, uh, in a pencil set, it's always, it seems to be the red. So we can, I can just put these out too, so you can just see how the colors swatched out. I know I said I wasn't going to swatch budget pencils anymore. Uh, these, I guess, would still fall in the budget realm because, you know, they're, let's see, 100 pencils, so 76 cents a piece, 77 cents a piece, so I guess that would fall in the budget pencils. I think they are shipping, they're free shipping to the United States. Um, estimated delivery is December 4th today, which is uh, October 26th when I'm recording this. Um, so I would pay attention to that if you're trying to get these for a Christmas present, but um, yeah, gorgeous colors. They performed really well. I don't think they're going to be your everyday go-to pencil if you're an artist because you're just going to go through pencils too fast for this to be a practical solution. But if you want a gift for a stationery expert, if you're um, even like a card maker where you're not using colored pencils every day, you're not doing big works, I think they would work fine for you and they look so cute on your, like with all of your um, coloring supplies and stuff. I just don't think they're going to be practical for every user because there's no open stock availability. That is if you can bear to sharpen them and use them because they're so darn pretty. <laughs> uh, but there you have it. I hope you found this useful. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my reviews. Also, I saw that Harry from the Art Gear Guide has a review on these. Always pays to get a second opinion and see what other people have to say. So, um, so go check out his review if you want another opinion. And, um, and I think there's also, there's also a French YouTuber that's reviewed these. And what I figured out is if you turn closed captions on, then you can usually auto translate and it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. So if you do want to watch a, um, a video in another language, that's a great way that you can understand, uh, what they're saying a little bit more. So you can see a little bit of that sheen as well. I just want to kind of Tip that to the light in case you want to see. It's got that oil pencil type of sheen to it, but it doesn't bother me. And you can take the sheen out a little bit by using um, a solvent on it if it bothers you. But I'm I'm actually really surprised at how well these perform. I thought they were just going to be a cute stationary set, and that's all. But they actually they actually get the job done, and um, and I'm pretty excited about that because when you can have form and function, we can have beauty and and functionality and practic practicality. That's just great. And what a we're all looking for those awesome gift ideas, right? So like anybody loves stationery, they're gonna love it. Adult coloring book enthusiasts, although they might go through the pencils a little quicker, it's still a fun gift to have. But anyway, I've uh, I have rambled on long enough about these. I hope you have a wonderful day. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye-bye.